15 minutes. Yes, yeah, sure. sure. No um, after 14 minutes, I will try to give you a warning, uh, uh, just that you sure. know. Sure. Um, so, so can can you hear me right now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No problem. So, so here I'm showing the first slide. Can can you see that as well? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, no worries. So, good day, everyone. Thanks, Eric, for the last great talk, and many thanks for attending my presentation. Um, my topic today will focus on extreme wave statistics and the mechanisms near reflective beige installations. I am representing the collaborators of this talk, including my co-supervisor, Professor Villa Consejo, uh, Professor Babaning from the University of Melbourne, and uh, my supervisor, Professor Chapcho. Uh, nowadays, because of climate change, we're expecting an increase of wind speed and therefore extreme weather events also in coastal areas. In some cases, this could cause a stronger wave focusing winds. Uh, as a result, infrastructures and human activities in the nearshore region could become potential victims of these extreme waves. For example, this video in, the, uh, in this slide shows a giant wave destroying the seafront balconies of a building located in the Tenerife Island in November 2018 where a wave height reached up to 12 meters. For our research, the near, shore, uh, the near shore wave field is simplified into a standing wave formed by reflected and incident wave trains. In the experiment, not only did we investigate the roll wave occurrence and the nonlinearity change and the reflections, but we also tried to figure out the mechanism behind the nonlinearity change. In our experiment, a wave flume was used to help gathering the surface elevation data. The wave flume located in the University of Sydney has a pitch piston type pedal that operates with a water depth between 0.3 to 0.9 meters, a frequency range of 0.5 to 2 hertz. The flume, uh, the flume has a length of 30 meters uh, with a reflective beach attached to the end. The beach angle alpha can be adjusted uh, in order to achieve different reflectivity coefficients. The walking frequency um, of our experiment is about 1 hertz, uh, and the wave elevation gauge is located um, near the beach as shown in the red dashed line. Now, the random wave train injected into the flume was generated from the so-called John Swap spectrum. This spectrum was observed and formulated back to 1973 by Hausmann et al, as you know. Um, the formulation mainly involves a peak frequency factor omega p um, and the peakness factor um, gamma, which controls the dominant frequency and the bandwidth of the wave train, respectively. The parameter alpha as a function of the signif significant wave height hs adjust the, the height of the spectrum and the consequently the wave height and the degree of nonlinearity of the random wave train. As an introduction, there are mainly two theories for the form of formation mechanism of row waves in unidirectional wave field. The simplest theory says that the linear focusing of some soil wave elements, which because of the dispersive nature of the waves in deep and finite water depths, travel at different speeds and cause focusings. On the other hand, nonlinearity is also believed to play an important role in wave dynamics. Equations such as nonlinear shorting equation can describe the wave um, through weakly nonlinear mechanisms. And these two mechanism, mechanisms both play a role in different scenarios. And whether linearity or nonlinearity dominates the wave process depends on the dynamics of the C state. To determine the extent of nonlinearity, a statistical parameter called kurtosis um, can be calculated using the wave train elevation we obtained. For purely linear wave train, it will have a kurtosis of three, and the wave elevation matches the normal distribution as the red curve shows. Um, if the wave train is nonlinear, the kurtosis should be greater than three, corresponding to the leptokurtic distribution as the blue curve shows. For the tested cases, there are 27 in total, including three significant wave heights, three beach angles and three different beige materials, um, which reflects different nonlinearities, reflectivities, and wave absorptivities. But due to the time lim limit, I'm not going to show the dependency of beach material installations and only show the moderate absor absorption case. Now on the left, we show an example of the three wave series over 1200 seconds 
and the different beige angles. On the right shows the spectrum of the wave train and the different beige angles and the significant wave heights, one, three, and six centimeters. From these plots, we know that the waves are accurately generated by the wave pedal. In the slide, we introduce the concept of accidents probability. Here, the, the x-axis are the normalized wave elevation, while the y-axis are the probability of the waves above this elevation. The accidents probability um, of, the crest, uh, of the crest height reveals that all of the distributions obey the nonlinear assumption of the unidirectional irregular wave train or typhoon distribution, shown as the red lines. Um, which is surprising for the significant wave height of one centimeter case because the wave nonlinearity is supp supposed to be very weak and the small stiffness. We see from the plots that uh, with more reflected waves, real wave probability tends to become lower and uh, as the distribution goes from uh, the red dots uh, for eight degrees to green stars um, for 50 degrees and eventually the blue circles for 90 degrees. We also reached perfect agreements from the comparison between the experiments and the simulation. In the simulation, if, if the nonlinear term was removed, we obtained the red line below representing a fully linear process. By including the nonlinear term, a conventional result of a weakly nonlinear random wave train is obtained as shown above in the purple line. The case has the highest rogue wave probability as well. As we introduce the opposite, uh, opposite reflected waves into simulation, um, to one surprise, we have a lower probability of rogue wave as shown in the yellow line. Now with a confidence interval of 80%, we show that the kurtosis as measured by the blue y-axis on the left keeps decreasing with the increase of reflectivity. However, from the right y-axis in red, the skewness of the wave train remains consistent over three uh, different beige angles, which implies that the bias of the wave train is hardly affected by reflections. Now that the nonlinearity seems to de decrease under reflections, we wonder if the role of nonlinearity is still relevant for extreme wave formation, say in standing wave conditions. For an example, we recall that within unidirectional nonlinear Schrodinger framework, a rogue wave solution called Peregrine Breather has already been proven to exist physically by Chapcho et al. And on the left, you could see the observation of a doubly localized Peregrine Breather evolution and the corresponding theory. On the right is the overall shape of the breather's envelope with respect to dimensionless time and space. Now, can this breather, however, exist in standing wave or counter-propagating water wave field? The next step, obviously, is observing the focusing process of a single rogue wave and the perturbation of the reflected plane waves. As you can see from the schematic drawing in the slide, uh, we first send, send a plane wave train and let it reflect it by the wall. And then we generate rogue wave solutions and let it collide with the, at the center with the reflected wave train, which forms a standing wave field. Now, here comes the result um, from the measured data. Over 184 densely arranged probe points, we can easily track the breather's evolution as guided by the red arrow in the plot. To our surprise, the breather focusing was extremely stable and predictable within the standing wave field, despite general understanding that uh, such counterpropagating system is considered non-integrable. In, in, in case that the audience may be confused, the localized nodes um, in the plot, as we see, are perfect examples of the standing wave dynamics, but I won't go into much detail on this. Next, we're going to compare the experimental data with the uh, coupled weakly nonlinear models. Starting from the famous nonlinear shooting equation, the coupled version of which can be obtained by adding additional terms in the nonlinear part of the equation. And here A and B represents the complex uh, wave envelope on the opposite directions. Again, please note that the coupled framework is generally considered non-integrable. The comparison between the observation and the coupled simulation, as the red and blue curves indicate, also shows very good agreements on the temporal and spatial series. 
suggesting that uh, rogue waves are predictable and they're focusing a study within a standing wave field. It is also interesting to observe that the simulation based on the Euler's equation, which is fully nonlinear, also shows perfect focusing process, as you could see in this plot. The blue shades shows the elevation of the pure rogue wave solution, while the red shade shows the rogue wave solution in the standing wave field. Furthermore, the location of focusing is not affected uh, or not shifted due to the existence of reflected waves compared uh, with the pure peregrine breather. The current and subsequent analysis was, was carried out together with our collaborators, Alexei Slaniev and Nomhito Mori. Um, let me to further observe the focusing process of the wave train on each direction. We isolate the two waves through estimate uh, through estimation FFT technique, firstly adopted by Goda and Suzuki in 19, uh, 1977. Uh, the animation on the right shows the standing waves uh, isolated and the isolated rogue wave and the isolated reflected waves evolving in space. By looking at the middle box, we clearly see that the amplification of the rogue wave um, uh, um, it, it, it isolated, uh, we, we can clearly see like the amplification of the rogue wave. Again, the, the very strong oscillation we see from the top box is simply due to the standing wave characteristics, um, which is heavily phase independent, uh, phase dependent, sorry. To provide a comprehensive view on the results, on the left are the spectra of the standing wave field followed by isolated incident, isolated in instant rogue wave and the reflected plane wave train while on the right are the corresponding wave fields before the fast Fourier transform. And from the two plots in the middle, one can clearly observe the focusing uh, and the spectrum broadening, of course, of the rogue wave as well as uh, 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 of the rogue wave, sorry. In fact, the spectral energy of the second harmonics, if we look at the, 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 uh, the spectrum here, uh, are decreasing along the tank including both standing and isolated waves. Now, we are yet to figure out what does this physically mean, but uh, theoretically from Gramstad and Chosen, um, Chosen's work on higher order coupled nonlinear shooting equation, we know that a weaker second harmonics is just as expected in the standing wave field. In fact, the energy of the second harmonics in the standing wave field is supposed to be one fourth of the corresponding power in the unidirectional wave field. So this is very close to the prediction as well. I would like to end up this talk by showing you a demonstration recorded in our Sydney lab. In the first half of, of the video, what you're seeing now is the unidirectional wave train traveling from the wave pedal. It'll pass through the camera and hit the smooth wall, a vertical wall made with glass. The wave train hits the wall and is reflected towards the pedal, forming a standing wave field as it travels back. Now, now the standing wave field is basically fully developed around the camera. In the second half of the video, we are looking at the uh, developed standing wave field with a peregrine breather traveling from uh, the far side of the uh, front of the camera. As the as the breather is approaching us, let me see where, where the, okay, here's the breather. Uh, this amplitude actually gradually increases and eventually reaches the peak just under the camera. And I can show you that again. So now the breather is very far from the camera. Um, you see this is approaching. And now the amplitude actually gets higher. Okay, it's here, and then it, it disappears. Okay, as a concluding remark, we show that the wave nonlinearity measured by kurtosis decreases with the increase of the reflected waves. However, from our observation on the standing and isolated wave field, the nonlinear rogue wave focusing is astonishingly clear and stable in counterpropagating states, despite the decrease of kurtosis. 
um, which has been also been confirmed by weekly, weekly and fully nonlinear theoretical models. Thus, the unidirectional nonlinearity still plays an important role, uh, even in standing wave field or equi equivalently under reflections. Thanks again for listening. Yep. Thank you very, much, thank you very much, Yuxian. You stay. Yeah.